We want to welcome tonight UC Davis law professor Lisa Ikimoto. And Lisa, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. We spoke with you about six months ago, and at that time you said you thought there were signs that the court was possibly headed in this direction. What were those signs then, and does this draft opinion tonight surprise you? Well, based on those signs, uh, the at least the conclusion of the of the um, draft document doesn't surprise me. At the time when I talked to you in December, I was basing my opinion on the arguments that took place in early December um, in the Dobbs case, and it was it seemed very clear to me, at least, that five of the justices were ready and prepared to overturn Roe versus Wade and Casey. Let's get to reaction now. Uh, tonight, Governor Newsom said California will, quote, fight like, fight like hell, his words against this. If this draft decision ultimately goes through, what legal authority would California or any state have to fight it? Well, they can't directly change the, uh, the decision of the Supreme Court, but there's a number of steps that California and other states have already taken and can continue to take in the future. So, for example, what the result of a decision um, as indicated by the draft opinion um, that was released um, is that it would then be up to states to decide to what extent and whether or not to protect the right to decide to terminate a pregnancy. Um, and California and quite a few other states have already strongly um, put into place either constitutional protections or statutes that protect the right to decide. And states like California, California has taken a very strong lead on this, have, try, have worked very hard to try to expand protections for people and actual access as well. Um, and so I think that's, that's certainly part of the fight. I think um, California's recent actions um, in other types of litigation have also, have also indicated a path forward um, to protect the right to decide. So for example, California worked with a number of other states in challenging restrictions on abortion access. So in supporting the rules that were promulgated by the federal government to protect contraceptive access, for example, yeah. um, and the same types of efforts um, in coordinating with other states could take place. And then I think um, state laws could be used to protect those who travel to California um, from being um, prosecuted when they return home as well. And California has already taken steps to do that. And, um, and so those should, are just some examples. And we should note, of course, for everyone, again, that this is just a draft at this point. So can you speak to the likelihood that uh, a justice could change their mind? And, and could some of the backlash we're seeing from Democrats tonight put pressure on justices? to change their opinions moving it's forward? It's still an open question. From what I understand, that draft was put together in February. Um, there's a great deal of time and, and many things can happen between February and the time when the opinion is, is ultimately released, maybe later this month or sometime in June. Um, so justices can change their mind. They have changed their mind in the past, although I don't know how many times, that's all anecdotal. Mm -hmm. um, it might be that they change their mind on uh, the smaller issues. So maybe five of the justices, my prediction is that five of the justices will hold fast on overturning Roe versus Wade and Casey. Mm -hmm. um, but that the opinion that we, that is now available, the draft opinion that's now available might change in its, um, in its analysis and how it gets to that conclusion. Interesting insight as always. This heated debate and just got a lot more heated with this. Doctor, appreciate your time. Professor Lisa Ikamoto, we appreciate your insight. Thank you so much. Thank you.